Hello friends, so welcome to this next video in the series on risk management in clinical laboratory. Now once the risk is evaluated as we have seen in the previous lecture, the next part is the risk control. So in the risk control, first we have to identify the ways to reduce those risks and prioritize the risk reduction measures. Now how to prioritize the risk we have seen already in the previous video that using RPN we can prioritize the risk. So here we have to identify various methods to reduce the risk and we have to prioritize the risk reduction measure. So first of all we will see about the risk control option. So the laboratory shall identify and implement verify risk controls measures that reduce the risk to an acceptable level or can completely eliminate the risk. So the risk control measure can reduce the severity of the harm, can reduce the probability of occurrence or can be useful in the both the things. While selecting a risk control measures, we have to prioritize some of the measures. So what are these measures? We will see. So first of all is the using the inherent safety by process design. So in many of the process, whenever we find out any risk, we have to find out that whether there are any, any inbuilt safety measure in the process itself such as potential for failure is eliminated so that potential for failure is eliminated the next thing is for selecting risk control measure is protective measures in IVD medical devices now if the risk is related with the IVD medical device so first of all we have to find out whether there is any risk control measure in the IVD medical device or in the equipment itself. Many times there are alarms, failure detection methods, fail safe mechanisms are in place in most of the medical devices or the laboratory equipment. So this can be used as a risk control measure. Whereas in other processes such as examination, pre-examination or post-examination processes, quality assurance procedures, calibrations, quality control activities, new quality control activities can be added by the laboratory to reduce the residual risk. So this another aspect should be looked while selecting the risk control measure. The next in the risk control measure is information for staff on safety. So staff must be given information about the safety of the risk processes which includes warnings, precautions, advisory notices for healthcare providers. Finally in the risk control option is the training. So training can be provided to the laboratory staff on risk control measures and use of various processes or various measures for controlling the risk. So while doing the analysis of each of the options for the risk control. This analysis if you notice that the risk reduction is not feasible the laboratory may conduct a risk benefit analysis of the residual risk to determine whether to continue to develop a risk control plan or implement the examination or implement the process in a manner it is already done. So while looking into the risk control option we have to do the analysis whether the risk reduction is feasible and if it is not feasible we have to perform the risk benefit analysis so as to find out after the risk control treatment or after the risk treatment whether the residual risk is beneficial or not. And if it is not beneficial whether the process should be continued in the same manner or the process should be eliminated from the laboratory's procedure. Now the next step is risk control verification. So once the risk control measures are placed and implemented it is very important to verify whether the risk control measures are placed and whether they are useful for the risk reduction model or not. So the correct implementation of each risk control measures shall be verified. The effectiveness of risk control measures shall be verified. Verification of effectiveness may be performed as a part of validation activity. So you can perform the verification of effectiveness whether the risk control measures are effective or not 
as a part of validation activity next part is role of standard in the risk control so while controlling the risk measures or while eliminating the risk in the laboratories or while eliminating the hazards in the laboratories it is important that the conformance to the relevant standard is also important so it should be taken care of that whenever the risk control measures are placed it should be in conformance to the relevant standard and should be a part of appropriate risk control analysis the next important part in the risk control is the role of ivd medical devices so many a times ivd medical devices that means the equipment which are used in the medical laboratories what is their role for the risk control measures so if the risk is identified in the ivd medical devices or in the equipment which is used in the examination process if such laboratory equipment are already designed developed and validated by the manufacturer in accordance with the iso 14971 standard which is specific standard for risk analysis in medical devices laboratory must follow the manufacturer's instructions regarding any risk controls measure incorporated or provided within the devices or given by the manufacturer's instructions in case of there are any exception to this it must be justified by the laboratory risk control measures which are incorporated in the laboratory equipment or ivd approved equipment may not require any further verifications if the equipment designed developed and validated as per the iso 14971 standard so the laboratory shall review the risk control measures incorporated or provided with the ivd medical equipment or laboratory equipment to decide whether the effectiveness of risk control measures require any additional verification by the laboratory or not now whenever in case we are making any modification to the ivd equipment itself part of risk control measures then in that case the revalidation of the risk control measure as well as the equipment may be required by the or is required by the laboratory the next part is risk arising from risk control measures now many a times whenever we are taking any actions or measurements to control the risk that measurement or that measure can itself cause a risk to the procedure so in that case each risk control measure shall be reviewed with regard to whether any new hazard or hazardous situations have been introduced or the estimated risk for previously identified hazardous situation will be affected by introduction of the new risk control measure any new or increased risk shall again be analyzed evaluated and controlled as per the risk management protocol the result of this review shall be recorded in the risk management documentation now finally the last thing is residual risk evaluation so whenever appropriate measures are taken to control the risk and the risk control measures are applied each residual risk shall be evaluated using the approved risk acceptability criteria which we have already discussed in the previous lecture the result of this evaluation also should be recorded and the records must be kept now in case if the residual risk is not acceptable using this criteria further option or further measurement of risk controls must be taken or must be considered now in such some cases if the risk reduction is not feasible the laboratory may conduct again a new risk benefit analysis of the residual risk to determine whether to continue to develop or implement an examination or service or you need to stop the procedure there itself if the residual risk is acceptable the laboratory can determine what information is necessary to communicate to the intended recipient so in many cases the residual risk is acceptable even though there is any residual risk is may be acceptable so in such cases we need to make a appropriate communication to the intended users to disclose the residual risk a documentation or copies of such communication must be maintained in the risk management document so with, we have seen about the risk control measures or risk treatment plan in the risk management process 
so with this we can close this video on the risk control and risk control 